Hello, fellow Rotarians and guests. I'm Lori Alton, and I'm honored to serve as your club president for the Rotary year 2021-2022. The Rotary Club of Columbus has a storied past, beginning in 1915, when a group of civic-minded people saw the need for leaders to come together to find ways to make our community better. And now, 106 years later, we're a vibrant, strong club that continues to place service above self. Our club is diverse with members across all sectors of business, government, military, healthcare, education, nonprofit and community service, ministry, and the arts. And we come together each week as friends with a shared purpose of learning how we can be more involved in the things that matter to all of us. And we leave committed to changing our community and changing lives. As Rotarians, we are people of action, and it shows. So welcome back to Rotary. Thank you for being here, and thank you for making a difference in our community. Well, hello, and welcome to the November 3rd meeting of the Rotary Club of Columbus. I cannot believe it's November. How wonderful to see all of you here, and for those of you joining us online, a warm welcome to you as well. Now would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I'd like to ask Ian Bond to bring us to the dedication in accordance with his faith tradition. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dear God, creator and sustainer of all things, who has implanted your image into every human being, help us through the eyes of your grace and your loving heart to see and respect the dignity of every human being and to express that love through acts of loving kindness and service in this community, throughout our district, and throughout the world. For this food, we thank you, and for this time of Rotary Fellowship, we also thank you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Please remember the pan. Now at this time, Austin Lyle will bring us today's news. Hello, everyone. And here's a look at your headlines. I don't think we can start with anything other. Can we get a big go bravos? Yeah, who's excited? After a three-run homer from Soler, a two-run homer from Dansby, and an RBI double, and a solo home run from Freeman, the Atlanta Braves are once again world champs. That feels really nice to say. <laughs> In local news, the Columbus sales tax increases to 9%. An unofficial count uh, says that the voters of Muskogee County voted to approve the SPLOST, which will be used for public safety projects, city repairs, technology upgrades, and of course the demolition and rebuilding of the government center. The tax will collect roughly $400 million over a period of 10 years beginning April 1st, 2022. And lastly, it's time to turn back those clocks. Daylight savings time comes to an end on Saturday, or actually Sunday morning at 2 a.m. if you're up. And if you have a manual clock, turn it back and enjoy an extra hour of sleep. The Dow Jones was down 75 points as of noon today, and your weather forecast is sunny with a high of 69 and a low of 50. Hope you have a great day. Now it's my pleasure to call on Haley Tillery to introduce today's visiting Rotarians and guests. Hello, good afternoon everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome a returning guest with us today, Ms. Angelica Roswadowski. I'm sorry about getting your last name um, pronounced wrong, but we're so glad you're here, Angelica. This is Tyler Townsend's guest, and we hope to one day have you a permanent guest here at Rotary. So Angelica, welcome. Thank you, Haley. <laughs> and now, it's always a great day when we can announce Paul Harris Fellows and even multiple Paul Harris Fellows. So I'd like to ask past President Michael Silverstein to share that with us. 
President Laurie and fellow Rotarians, yes, it is a great day for the Rotary Foundation. And first of all, before I call up our newest Paul Harris Fellow and multiple Paul Harris Fellow, I just want to thank Gene and Haley for everything that they are doing and will continue to do on behalf of Rotary football and the dollars that go to the annual fund for the Rotary Foundation. And if there's anybody who's not playing Rotary football but would like to maybe make a one-time contribution to Rotary football for this year, I know Haley and Jean would be more than willing to accept those checks. And just one other thing. The Rotary Foundation many times, in order to really understand how your dollars impact, be sure and look at your Rotary magazine because you will very quickly see the impact it has in terms of the dollars that come back to our community, to our state, to our country, and the impact on the world. And now it's my pleasure and honor oops, excuse me, to call up Chris Carlson, who is our newest Paul Harris Fellow, and Rick Alexander, who is a multiple Paul Harris plus four. If you please come up. and your certificate. Wait, Chris, stay right here. Rick, I want to personally, as the Rotary Foundation Chair and on behalf of the entire club, thank both of you for your contributions and the fact that you now join multiple people around the world who certainly demonstrate as you have service above self by virtue of the contributions you make. Please join me as we once again congratulate them. Thank you, Chris and Rick, for your support of the Rotary Foundation. And as you know, the contributions to the foundation not only benefit all of the programs globally that Rotary is involved in, but it also a portion of that comes back to us locally in the forms of our district grant and our competitive grants. And so thank you both so much. We have a special Rotary football update, so if I could ask Jean Kemp and Haley Tillery to please come up, there you are, and give us an update. Yes, and thank you for that shout out. I love the fact if you want to do that one-time donation, maybe you were like, man, I wish I got some of this fun, or you just want to be so happy that the Braves won and want to put a donation to the Rotary Foundation, we will accept that. But as Gene makes his way up, I do have a Rotary football update, and you have these on your tables. I want to briefly mention our top five teams, North Carolina at 292 points, Tennessee 299 points, Georgia, it's going to be a good game this weekend, 303 points. Finley, Ohio in second place this year with 326 points. And number one, Alabama with 367 points. And thank you to everyone participating this year because as of right now, based on last weekend's results, we are now at $11,206 raised for the Rotary Foundation. And every week that deserves an applause. Yeah. Thank you, Haley. Uh, some more big news this week. For the first time that I can remember in years, Bates College is no longer in last place. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think this was their last game, so they might be back there next week. So one more, one more. Uh, some good games coming up this week. Alabama and LSU. Mississippi State and Arkansas. Georgia and Missouri. Auburn at Texas. Georgia Tech at Miami, South Carolina at Florida. I know they're looking forward to that one. And also Tennessee at Kentucky. So thanks, everybody, for playing Rotary football. And uh, we'll cheer on your team, and we'll see you next week. So, so Haley, the real winner is who? Rotary Football. Rotary, Rotary Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of announcements today. Please consider nominating someone that you know in the community for the Dan Reed Award. As you know, the Dan Reed Award honors someone who is a non-Rotarian, but who is doing great things in our community and, and exemplifies service above self. We have the forms in the back of the room and the nominations 
are accepted until November 29th. That's the Monday after Thanksgiving. So you have the whole Thanksgiving weekend to do your nomination and then still get it turned in. And then also, would you please join us for our Rotary Happy Hour mix? That's tomorrow evening. We're going to do it on Zoom from 6 to 8. Just pop in anytime. Say hello to everybody. And you get a makeup as well. So joining me today at the head table is Ian Bond, who brought us today's invocation. And now it's my pleasure to ask Newt Aaron to please introduce today's speaker. I haven't been up here in about two and a half, three years. <clears throat> I'm glad to see all of you, as always. <clears throat> it's my pleasure today to introduce Mary Sherman. Mary is the executive director of the Columbus Sports Council, which most of you know, but let me refresh those that don't. It's a 501c3 organization that fosters economic development through the recruitment and facilitation of sporting events. Mary has worked for this nonprofit organization for nearly 17 years, and she has a deep passion for her work. Mary, along with her staff and the loyal volunteers of the Sports Council, bring over 17 million dollars in annually in estimated impact to the community through the many events hosted throughout the year. Mary has received the Carlton Corky Kill Award in recognition of service and dedication to high school athletes and coaches in the state of Georgia, as well as the Beverly Sanders Reigns Award for her contribution to the betterment of athletics by the Georgia Athletic Coaches Association. Just recently, in the last week or so, she received the National Federation of State High School Associations National Contributor Award for her leadership in hosting the state softball tournament. Mary has been named a rising star by the Greater Columbus Chamber of Commerce, named in the 40 Under 40 by Georgia Trend, and has earned the distinction of Certified Sports Event Executive by Sports Events and Tourism Association. She serves on the Columbus State University Athletic Foundation Board on the Committee for Women's Giving Circle, which raises funds for the fine arts programs for the Boys and Girls Club, Secretary of the Chattahoochee Valley Sports Hall of Fame Board, and is an active volunteer in her church. In her spare time, she enjoys cheering on and driving, that's what I understand, uh, her two children in all their sports and other activities. Please join me in welcoming Mary Sherman. Thank you so much, Newt, for that warm introduction, and thank you for allowing me to be here today to share with you some exciting news that's going on in the Columbus Sports Council. Um, as Newt said, I've been with the organization for quite a long time, and how about the Braves? I am so excited that they won the World Series, so congratulations to our home state and their recognition here. Um, but something that happened in 1995, the last time the Braves won the World Series, Columbus was preparing for something pretty significant, and that was the 1996 Olympics. And that's where our organization really got its foundation and start, and the start in sports tourism for the Columbus and our communities. And so it's, it, you know, it's kind of special looking back at the 95, um, 1995 Braves World Series championship win, and then now in 2021. Just this past weekend, we hosted the Georgia High School State Softball Championship. 64 teams were in town with an estimated impact to our community of $1.4 million. Currently this week, we're hosting the GRPA State Conference, and this is Georgia Rec and Parts Association professionals from all over the state. Fountain City Classic is kicking off this week, which traditionally brings $1 million to our community each year. All of this just this past week happened in, in sports in Columbus. And of course, the Splice News yesterday, we're so excited about that because that helps us with the enhancements to parks to bring more sports tourism to our community. So we're super proud um, of Columbus for passing the Splice. As Newt said, for those of you who are not familiar with the Sports Council, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. We help with the recruitment and the facilitation of sporting events here in our city. Let's see if this is on. Yeah. Oh, 
there we go. So mentioned in the 1996 Softball Olympic Games, that was where we really got our start in sports tourism. And we're very fortunate that Columbus saw the vision for sports because that's really, it was before its time. It was before the boom in sports. And now today we receive emails every week from cities who are building complexes that eventually we compete with. These are multi-million dollar facilities that other cities are just now building because they're just now realizing the value of sports in a community. And thankfully for Columbus, when we got our start with the Olympics, that really helped expedite the sports tourism world here in our city. There are several events that we created here in our community, as well as the ones that we bring in. Kids in Motion was a program that we started when PE was taken out of curriculum in our elementary schools. And it was a program to incentivize our youth to remain active. And it also gave them little trinkets along the way um, for doing their activities and staying active. Columbus in Motion was a program that we did for skateboarding and running and cycling which was something that was great for our city and keeping Columbus in motion. Aflac Outdoor Games, if you remember, we hosted the Steel Timber Sports Series. We had a barbecue competition. We had dot dogs, a lot of fun activities that happened at South Commons, and then eventually we brought it down to the Riverwalk. Celebration of Sports Excellence was one of our events where we recognized all by city athletes. We brought in Coach Carter, um, Rudy Rudiger, um, several big names, Dominique Wilkins came and spoke, so that was a great event, recognizing all by city athletes. And then the Restmeyer Vision Cup. This was an event that we started in a Ryder Cup format with golf um, professionals from all over the country, all over the world, who are blind and vision impaired. That event left Columbus, it went to Milan, Italy, it went to Dublin, and eventually it'll come back to our Columbus community. A few of the other things that we are a part of is in sports marketing. It's helping to market our, our different sporting facilities that we have in Columbus to our community. And a couple of ways that we have done this in the past was when the ice rink was being built, we hosted the college hockey clash, bringing in college hockey teams to come and compete at the Civic Center. We hosted the SEC hockey championships, all in an effort to help market that we were opening a new ice rink, which all helped us in bringing Georgia Tech in to do their camp, as well as Auburn were the home ice for them, as well as FSU. So using sport to help market some of our facilities. An example of that is here at the Trade Center. We've hosted the American Grappling Federation for seven years, and that business has led to other business, boxing, um, which you can see in the center photo there, that's Evander Holyfield. His son participated in an event that we held here in Columbus. We've hosted dance and gymnastics and other events here at the Trade Center. So while the river was being restored to its natural flow, creating the whitewater course, we hosted two catfishing tournaments, one with Bass Pro Shops and one with Cabela's. And this was all in an effort to help market Columbus as a catfish destination for fishermen all over. So those were exciting. We tied them in with local festivals um, to give the fishermen an exciting experience here in our community, but also to put Columbus on the map with the fishing world. We hosted a kayaking event with blind beat baseball players. Beat baseball is baseball for the vision impaired. They hit and filled the ball by listening to the beeps. We hosted their World Series in 2013 and decided to put them in the river and have a kayak race with them. And Taiwan won our race in 2013. We helped market Columbus State University. We love hosting events on campus. This gives young students an opportunity to see that college setting at a very early age, and sometimes it's their first experience on a campus. And we love ha having the events there where we can help market Columbus State to potential students. This was um, the cup stacking regional that we held there. We've had dance, cheerleading, wrestling, lots of basketball at, on campus at Columbus State. Golden Park. During the times where we had um, lost our professional team, we had several collegiate tournaments at Golden Park, all in an effort to keep our local fans engaged with Golden Park, as well as book different events that would bring that economic impact to our city. 
And those are some pretty cute kids in some of those pictures. Two of those are mine. <laughs> my son threw out the first pitch, and then my daughter, her favorite song at the time, um, she got to name that tune on top of the dugout. So fun memories. The skateboard park. So Columbus in Motion that I referenced just a few minutes ago was an event that we incorporated skateboarding. This was before we had the skateboard park. And so we hosted the Georgia Bowl Riders once the park was open to help expose not only our state skateboarders, but also those in the region that we had a brand new facility that they could come and skate. And we constantly see those out of town plates at our skateboard park we continue to come and skate our incredible bowl. Speaking of bowl, we've hosted a lot of bowling events. We've hosted collegiate events where, that are aired on ESPN. We became professional clappers, if you didn't know that existed. When we have ESPN, you have to have the seats full and you clap in between the commercial breaks. Um, so that, that's been a great experience in hosting different bowling events in the community. Our aquatic center, so in 2016, we hosted the NAIA Swimming and Diving Competition at the Columbus Aquatic Center. We hosted it from 2016 to 2019, and we will again host 22, 23, and 24. This brings 500 athletes to our community, and they stay a week, which is an incredible economic impact for our city. We've hosted numerous events over the years. We support the Fountain City Classic, the Southeastern Amateur, USTA events in partnership with CORDA. So events all over the city we traditionally help support. Some of the ways that we try to engage our local community in some of these events, because most of the events that we support are those outside guests who are coming in. So we try to get our local schools involved. We've had art contests where the kids do their artwork. We display it at the event. We invite the parents and the kids to the event, let them come for free. We display their artwork, and then we recognize them in a ceremony at the, at the venue. We incorporate education into some of our events where we take some of our collegiate athletes into the schools to talk about the core values of being a student athlete, integrity and respect, and they get to talk about being um, an athlete as well as their academics and the role that it plays in their, their college professional career. We could not do any of this without our volunteers. Um, we have volunteers who have been with us since the 96 Olympics. They have pins. We continue that pin tradition that started with the Olympics, and it becomes bragging rights. Who has the most pins? Who has all the years? And so we could not do anything without them. They are the front line. There are greeters at the gates, and they are um, something that just cannot be replaced. They are amazing and help us with every event that we host. So you may have heard recently that we did a renovations project at South Commons. Our original goal was $5.6 million to reinvest into the facility, and to date we have reinvested $5.8 million into South Commons. These are a few pictures of what it looked like prior to our renovations. In 2017, we brought in a national consultant that not only looked at South Commons, we looked at Woodruff Farm Soccer Complex, A.J. McClellan Memorial, all the venues in town that we use for sports tourism. And these are some of the photos that he shot while he was here and we presented to council in December of 2017. You can see some of the disrepair, the structural issues, the restrooms, concessions, just some of the issues that we were experiencing at South Commons. In our first phase of renovations, we went through and upgraded LED lighting, new seating, ADA ramps. And today, I'm not holding the button. This is what our complex looks like. New paint, new restrooms, new concession equipment, 
In 2019, we hosted a very successful USA Softball International Cup, where once again, we had Olympic teams from all over the world here in our community. And once again, Team USA won gold here in Columbus, Georgia. We are the only city in the United States who has ever hosted Olympic softball. And at the conclusion of the week, Coach Ken Erickson of USA Softball called South Commons a cathedral for softball. And those words absolutely still get me every time I hear it. One of the events that I'm super proud to host is our Georgia High School State Softball Championships, which we just hosted this past weekend. This is an image of the 64 teams parading during opening ceremonies. After International Cup, we continued with renovations at South Commons. We added bullpens, which we did not have previously. We updated restrooms around the five fields. <clears throat> Excuse me. We added a batting cage facility for all our teams for warm up. And part of our reopening strategy for COVID-19 was to install video streaming cameras on all eight fields. And to date, we've had over 143,000 game views on our streaming cameras. So all of this, the result that we had from doing these renovations at South Commons was over $4.6 million in either extended agreements with collegiate that were coming in or either new groups that we have booked since the renovations. And this year, this past year alone, we had over $8 million in estimated impact from South Commons alone. So as an organization, the impacts of COVID hit us pretty strong. We had a reduced budget, reduced staff, volunteers were not able to come out to some of our events until recently. Um, we've had canceled events. We lost one of the biggest economic impact events um, that we host here in the community to a city located in the center of the state that didn't have some of the COVID restrictions that we had. So we will be working very hard to get that business back in our city where it belongs. But COVID did not defeat us. In 2020, we won Sports Commission of the Year from our Sports and Event and Entertainment Travel Association. We won Complex of the Year from USA Softball, numerous staff awards, and we had over 24,000 participants in FY 2021 with an economic impact of over $11 million. So as we move forward, what the Sports Council is looking at is aligning our mission with city initiatives. So how can we do that? How can we help support some of the things that the city is looking for in Columbus 2025? And one of the ways that we're doing that is exploring new market segments uh, um, as it relates to STEAM. Um, and one of those events is Green Power. This is what I call an intentional win with adding workforce development and economic development together. And I'm gonna show a quick video to describe this, this event. This is Green Power USA, where students build and race their own electric race cars. I enjoy the races because like, it's a STEM program, which like, when I grow up, I wanna be an engineer. So it kind of helps me a lot with my career and it's overall fun. I think Green Power is a fun STEM program that teaches you the fundamentals about car racing and teamwork. Driving the Black Mamba is probably the best experience I've ever had. Green Power USA is the most exciting STEM program in America, and we hope you'll get involved. We launched this program in October of 2020, and we have 12 local teams through the Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, Columbus Parks and Recreation After School Program, Muskogee County School District, and Phoenix City Elementary School District. We had a race very quietly in February of 2021. 
Um, we had a lot of COVID restrictions, so we did not publicize the race. But the good news is we have four races this school year. The elementary race will be November 20th at the Civic Center, and then we have an uptown race December 4th and a few after the first of the year. But this program is incredible. 35% of the participants are female, which is the highest um, STEM-related program of, amongst all females. Putting Columbus on the map, we do this through some of our Hall of Fame inductions. We always use Columbus imagery and our awards banners. Um, at the bottom of the screen, MLB Network was here over the summer with the Junior Olympic Cup televising games. ESPN was here back in May televising the NAIA National Championships for softball. I have two interns that are in the top image. They worked with us over this past summer. One was from Crown College in Minnesota, and one was University of Montevallo. Both of the, those young ladies documented their experience here in Columbus, and as well as all of the athletes that come here and the visitors that come here when they help us promote Columbus. Those are reaching users that we wouldn't otherwise potentially. The last thing I'm going to talk about is just recruiting young talent. I think those are some of the words that we see in the 2025 um, initiatives for the city. We do this a lot with our collegiate athletes that we bring to Columbus. They get to experience firsthand the quality of life that we offer here in Columbus, as well as the many businesses and um, opportunities where they can work here in our city. So we love bringing that college age um, to Columbus to help promote the overall quality of life that we have here. Again, thank you so much for letting me share about the Sports Council. It's truly a passion of mine. I've been here a long time. I've grown up with this, this organization and with our volunteers and with our many clients, and I am happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions? I've got one for you, Mary. Um, I know we've we've seen a huge growth in the uh, desire of people to bike on the whether it's biking on the Riverwalk, the Dragonfly Trail. Now we've got mountain bike trails out there at Standing Boy. Has there been an effort to promote those new opportunities within the Sports Council to bring groups nationally, maybe? Absolutely. So we work and we typically travel to where we meet with organizers who have different events, but we have been talking with several cycling organizers particularly to help bring in those events to utilize some of our new um, facilities like Dragonfly. So absolutely. Hi, Mary. With the uh, historical significance of Golden Park, movements to upgrade the facilities at Golden Park uh, from the seats to the outfield fences to the scoreboards and those kind of things to make it more of a marketable place to play baseball? So part of what we did during the transition of the professional teams is that we brought in the collegiate teams, like I stated. Um, with the Chattahoots coming on board, that was one of the things that they did, and they committed to the city that they were going to reinvest into Golden Park. And if you haven't been recently, they have done that. They have done a really nice job. They had to replace two of the lights that shine down on the infield, um, as well as some of the upgrades throughout the stadium. So I think they've done a tremendous job. Um, I think he's bringing the microphone over. <laughs> of high school teams that were just here, including coaches, parents, et cetera. Uh, how is our availability in terms of rooms for all of the teams that we're bringing in? That is a great question. Um, so right before state, there's always an influx in, of room inventory. Um, we have teams who may have thought they were coming, and then they got um, you know, beat out in the regional right before. And so we have teams holding rooms that now are not coming. And so we always have this crazy inventory that week. Uh, but right now, we need more rooms. 
We aren't back at the level that we were even a few years ago, even with the addition of the Indigo and the AC and the Hampton Inn coming on board because we lost two significant hotels, the Holiday Inn on Manchester Expressway as well as the Howard Johnson. And the Holiday Inn, excuse me, the Holiday Inn was one of the largest properties that we have as far as room count. And so we're not quite there still where we were a few years ago. Um, we do sell out the city quite often. We do have teams that are sometimes staying in Opelika, in Noonan, in, you know, Callaway. So there, for certain examples, with certain events, there is demand for more hotel rooms, as well as fields. Hey, Mary, talk about the Savannah Banana Tour. Okay, so you may have heard the Savannah Bananas are coming to town. That was a, a call actually four years ago, four years ago in the making. Um, as soon as they had, I think, their first, Festival season, we reached out to them because at that time Golden Park was still sitting empty, and we invited them to come tour Golden Park to see, you know, if that might be an opportunity for them to expand with another team. And at that time, they fell in love with Golden Park. The commissioner did. Everybody loves the historicalness of the facility, but we were just unable to get a team. So the Chattahoots came in. Savannah Bananas saw them as a, you know coming into Golden Park, and they reached out and asked if. We interested because they're selling out every single game every single season down in Savannah and so they started this world tour where they can go on tour to different cities um, and take their product all over and so we were one of those stops they announced recently that they are coming to Columbus it was a selection process through a lot of voting and Columbus rose to the top we're super excited they're coming they have some crazy rules if a spectator catches a foul ball it's an out uh, they have a dancing first base coach. They have, um, you can steal first, like different things, really to make it entertaining with good baseball. Um, that date, I think, is April 14th. There is a process to get on the ticket list because we only have 3,700 seats at Golden Park. So if you're interested to come and see this Savannah ball, I encourage you to get on that, that list to get, be able to get tickets to it. My contact information can be shared. It's columbusgasports.com is our website. Please reach out to me if you have any ideas, recommendations, suggestions. Um, we do a lot, but we enjoy what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary, for that great presentation. I think one of the things that surprised me the most was the impact during 2020 the number of participants that you actually had during 2020. And so thank you for all that you do. And, and you may not know this, but we honor our speakers each week with a, a children's book, and we will inscribe your name on it and place it in the Columbus Public Library. So thank you. So please remember that we will have a replay of today's program on our Facebook page as well as a YouTube link so that you can rewatch. I wanted to say a quick hello to Haisha. Haisha, how is your week going? Pretty good. Hmm. Okay. I need, normally it's really good, so may need to follow up with that. I'd like to re-welcome our visitor today, and you definitely will not want to miss next week's program. We will have past president Greg Camp with the National Infantry Museum. So until we meet next week, let's continue to make a difference.